Hey everybody, welcome back to Extreme IE. In this video, we're talking about next-gen firewalls and intrusion prevention systems. Now, uh, you can just call these NGFWs or IPS for short. Now, in this video, it, it's going to be probably a little bit longer than you may realize. I'm, I'm going to try to keep it in under 10 minutes, but I might go over. Um, and I am going to be in a chicken versus the egg scenario, meaning it's, it's going to be difficult for me to just explain you know, everything about firewalls without spilling over into other things. So I'll do my best, but keep in mind that this is just the beginning of the course. As we get further on, you'll you'll understand more and more about what these things do. So first of all, what is a firewall? A firewall is a device. It could be virtual, it could be physical. They come in all shapes and sizes. We'll talk about that in just a second. Um, it's a device that lives on your network, and its only purpose, its sole purpose in the universe is to keep something on your network or an entire network from seeing something else on your network or seeing another network entirely. So it's basically a device that says this thing or this network is not allowed to see this other thing or this other network, or it is allowed. That's what a firewall does. It's a device where we pass all of our traffic through it or some of our traffic, depending on what we want to do. And that device either allows or denies whatever that kind of traffic is. Traditionally, we have deployed these at the edge of our network, meaning we deploy them at the very edge of our organization and we use it as a blocker, as a gateway between the internet and all the things that are going on out there and our internal organization. And that's really why they come in different shapes and sizes because they have different purposes, different roles, if you will. They do the same thing, but they're placed in different areas of the network or they're placed in different size networks. And so that's why, again, they come in different shapes and sizes. You can have smaller firewalls for your smaller you know, home office networks or branch offices. You can have much larger firewalls for your larger corporate networks and data centers and things like that. Um, throughput, meaning how much data we're actually going to send through these firewalls walls play into the size that we're going to need so obviously the bigger firewalls are going to have more ports so if you look here i know that it's white and it's hard for you to really see but uh let me change the color if you look right here you'll notice that this firewall has a lot more ports um, than maybe what this firewall would have because it's a bigger firewall it's meant to handle more traffic it's meant to it's meant to handle more data so going back to where they're placed in our network and, and how they're placed at the edge of our network so i just want you to imagine for a second let me actually go back to white here so I want you to imagine here for a second that you have a desktop and that desktop is connected to a switch and that switch is connected to a router because maybe we have multiple networks but for now we'll just draw one and then that router is connected to the internet now, now hanging over here in there in our internets is an attacker without a firewall that attacker could essentially see what we would call the public IP address this is the uh, this is the IP address of your organization out on the internet that attacker might be able to find that public IP address and send an attack directly into your network, to your desktop, and be able to compromise it, you know, install software on it, compromise your data, whatever it may be. And so this is where a firewall comes in. So I'll draw the same network over here. So we have a desktop, and that desktop is connected to a switch. Except instead of the switch connecting directly to a router, there might be a firewall in the middle. And then, of course, we have our router, and then we have the internets. So that same attacker that sends traffic into that firewall, that firewall is essentially going to draw a brick wall and going to say, no, you're not allowed in because I'm not allowing any traffic. In fact, whenever you look at a network diagram, firewalls are typically represented by a brick wall because the whole idea there is that the firewall is not going to allow any traffic unless you specifically go and say, hey, allow, you know, whatever it may be. So what would that look like? Well, let's say that we have a server over here. Uh, you know, for our organization, we have a, uh, let's say we have a server connected to that same, that same switch. And let's just say that it's hosting some kind of website. So we'll say that it's hosting a, a, a website on port 443, which is what HTTPS traffic is. And we have, you know, we have an attacker out here. And we also have, uh, let's just say a user, right, or, or a customer. Now the customer wants to come to our come to our e-commerce e website and buy one of our products and so they're going to send you know they're going to open up google they're going to type www dot you know uh you know extremeieproducts.com and that's going to send to our public address ultimately through dns and other plat uh, and other protocols that's going to come to our public address and that firewall is going to say oh okay i see that we have 443 traffic coming inbound to that address i'm supposed to send it to that web server and i'm supposed to allow that but 
I'm not going to send that 443 traffic anywhere else in the environment because I'm only supposed to allow it in and I'm only supposed to allow it to this particular server that's hosting the website. So that's where a firewall would come in. But what about a next gen firewall? Well, what happens if this attacker also sends the same 443 traffic into that web server and that attacker's goal is to run some kind of attack, run some kind of script, see if they can figure out some kind of loophole or some kind of hole in a developer's code to hack our web server. Well, a regular firewall is not going to care. A regular firewall is just going to say, yep, you know, it's web traffic, it's the right port, it's, it's from anybody in the world, I don't care, I'm just going to allow it into the web server. That's what a legacy firewall will do. But a next generation firewall includes what we would consider intrusion prevention, meaning it doesn't just allow everyday traffic in. It actually inspects the traffic that's coming into our environment. Even though we have a rule that says, yes, allow in, you know, that particular port and protocol, the firewall is going to actually take a deeper look into the traffic itself and say, is this something that is malicious? Is this something that I should allow, even though there's a rule that says allow it? And it may trigger and say, hey, you know what? I'm going to allow this traffic because it's just a, a regular website request. But over here, this person's trying to do, you know, a SQL injection attack. And I, I recognize that signature. I recognize that type of attack. I recognize what's happening. And even though I have a rule that says allow, I'm going to deny it. I'm going to cut off that connection because I recognize that there is an intruder trying to gain access to this particular uh, asset or server or, or what have you. So that's essentially what a firewall does. That's essentially what a next gen firewall does. Obviously, we're not going to get into configuring into this video. But there is something that I do want to tackle and then make sure that you understand because I suspect there might be some questions. In my diagram, I drew things directly connected. In other words, a desktop, switch, uh, firewall, and router, right? In a real network, these things are most likely not going to be directly connected like this. In other words, you're not going to physically cable every desktop to the same switch, to the same firewall, to the same router. Oftentimes, this is going to be... Um, kind of like spaghetti. Let me kind of draw out what this would look like in real life. So you may have a switch and off of that switch you're going to have maybe a number of desktops. Okay, we'll just draw two for now so, so you understand. Off of that same switch you're going to have your router and you're going to have your firewall. So these are all going to be hanging off of the same switch. What we would manipulate in this case, and again, I'm not saying that this is the best way to do it in a, in a real network at, at an expert level. This is probably not what I would do. But again, as a CCNA, as you're learning these things and you're gaining uh, network understanding, I'm going to draw it this way so that you understand. But again, as you evolve and as you learn, you're going to realize oh, well, that's not the best way. What we would do a lot uh, of times is we would manipulate what we call the default gateway. Now, if you go into your machine, your laptop, desktop, right now, you open up a command prompt, assuming you're on Windows, and you type ipconfig, you'll have to bear with me, I don't know the command for Mac, but I'm sure you can find that. And you look at your, uh, your IP address, you're going to see your IP address, you're going to see your subnet mask, and you're going to see the gateway. What is the gateway? The gateway is the IP address that your machine will send all of the traffic to as a last resort if your machine does not know what to do with it. So what you would do in this case, you have a desktop here, and you would say, okay, you know what, the default gateway of my machine in the DHCP address that we hand out is actually going to be the IP address of the firewall. And so your desktops are always going to send traffic to that firewall. And if there are rules that do not allow certain desktops to see each other, or maybe you have, uh, we'll say off of that switch over here, we have a wireless access point, and what we have connected to that wireless access point is uh, our, our BYOD devices, meaning, you know, regular cell phones, tablets, things like that. Things that individual people are bringing in that are not owned by your organization. And we don't want these desktops to ever be able to see these BYOD devices because we don't secure these. We don't have any software to secure them. We don't know what's on them. We don't know if they're malicious or not. And so everything would use the firewall as its default gateway. And in that way, we can create rules that say, hey, the subnet of our BYOD devices is not allowed to ever talk to the subnet that our desktops live on or the subnet that our printers live on. And so all of that traffic would pass through the firewall, and the firewall would either allow or deny based on the rules that we've set up. Now, the default gateway of the firewall is going to be the router.
So anytime you go to send traffic to, let's say, Google, for example, well, the firewall is not going to know what Google is. And so the firewall is going to forward that traffic to the router and the router is going to say, OK, cool. Yeah, I'm going to send that out to the Internet because that's what I'm supposed to do with it. And so even though it's not directly connected, we're going to manipulate the default gateway so that it all passes through that one switch. So what essentially that looks like is traffic all going through that switch, even though the devices are not directly connected. So the firewall is sending bi-directional traffic as it receives traffic in and says, okay, I don't know what to do with this. It's going to send it back out to, you know, whatever the IP address of the router is. It's going to come out of that port on the switch. It's going to go to the router and the router is going to send it to the internet. As that traffic comes back, let me draw a different color. As that traffic comes back into the router, the router is going to say, okay, cool. That particular traffic came from the firewall, so I'm going to send it to the firewall. The firewall is going to say, oh, yeah, right, I remember that. That came from this particular desktop over here, and it's going to forward it on. So even though they're not directly connected, we're going to do all of that by essentially setting the default gateways and, and using some routing, which we'll get to a little bit later on, but they're not directly connected. And this is also why we can do things like having virtual routers in our environment. So you may see where in your environment, you may have a couple of physical firewalls like you see here. You may have, you know, uh, high density firewalls where, you know, you have a lot of different ports. Uh, if you look at the two firewalls on the bottom, these are uh, what Cisco considers firepower or that's what they call them today. It's called Cisco firepower. That's the next gen firewall. The legacy firewalls are ASAs or adaptive security appliances. And then they have uh, adaptive security appliances virtual or a little V afterward. And so you can have a lot of these different devices in your network doing different things. And you can actually load up an ASAV in VMware. And once you know the IP address of that virtual firewall, you can just, again, send all the traffic to that virtual firewall. And that virtual firewall will do everything that I just drew out. It will say, OK, I'm supposed to send this traffic to the Internet. OK, I'm supposed to deny this traffic from these desktops to those cell phones. And the, the virtual firewall will do what it needs to do. And in that way, um, you don't need to necessarily buy a physical firewall. You don't need to rack it and stack it. You can just load up a virtual firewall. You can also have a virtual firewall with firepower as well. So there's a lot that I left out of this video. There's a lot that we're going to cover as we grow and as we go along, as we actually learn how to configure these things and actually get a network up and running. All these little gaps that are in this video are going to be filled in, I promise. But at the end of the day, just remember, a firewall is meant to keep one thing from seeing another thing. A next-gen firewall takes it a step further by saying, okay, I'm going to include intrusion prevention and say, even though I'm supposed to allow this thing to see this thing, I'm going to inspect that traffic and make sure that it's a real-life person or real-life traffic that's supposed to be looking for this thing. All right? I hope you guys enjoyed this video. See you in the next one.